Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an impressionist realist painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosson of Steve Brosson's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde J.K.L. I'm the host of this podcast. I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, botanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrative hand and watercolor, pen and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. And this is the Artist Friends Podcast. My name is Clyde J. Kale. It is September 30th, the last day of the month. And we are episode 15 now. I am here with Diana and Constance Bronson. And uh, hello, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hi, everyone. Hello, Constance. Good evening, everybody. Hello. Okay. Welcome to everybody that's listening to our podcast. I hope you've enjoyed our past episodes. Um, this episode, I when I sent the email out uh, announcing uh, you know the link to the uh, podcast and uh, a little bit of the theme, I couldn't come up with a theme. So I guess we could say this episode is all about nothing. I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> We're just gonna do some chit chat here, just chatter. I hope you folks uh, enjoy it. Of course, uh, we have all kinds of conversations that we don't record, but uh, <laughs> maybe we can still have some of those. Uh, you know, so we try to be a little more informative, but sometimes we just run out of things to uh, want to talk about. You can only do so much marketing and so much uh, soul searching and so much motivation talk and before it all starts sounding the same. And, uh, a couple of the videos I did recommend were uh, from the uh, TED Talk series. They're short 15-minute videos. I think one of them, Diane, mentioned you uh, wanted to talk about. Uh, which one is it, uh, Paul? Um, well, I think the um, one about building an artist's life was interesting. <clears throat> I've heard that one before, but um, Jolie uh, Gillibo, she did 100 paintings. Uh, well, she started out doing 100 paintings and ended up doing 1,000 paintings. So I thought that was interesting. She did a painting a day, and she just did that so that she would create something every day just to get herself going, like make to force herself to create something every day. Yeah. And I think that's kind of it, – it, it, it's hard to do. It's really hard to do that, but um, it is an important thing, I think, because it does get your – mind into the creative space and it um it forces you to um make something just to you know get your hands wet or get you know get your hands into the uh, mediums or whatever you're using and it's um I mean, i've done a 30-day one i've never done one for that long like she was doing but i know how hard it is to do that every single day because things come up in your life and you know things your life stuff happens and interrupts all the, you know, your creative energy and your 
um, it's hard to keep your mindset like when things like that happen. So I think that's something we could talk about, maybe what, what we all do to help keep us in that space. Before we started the recording up, uh, before you joined and, uh, you know, Constance was here earlier and she was talking that uh, Constance was saying that she's going to have to turn her cell phone off like I do. Like when I'm in the house, I turn my cell phone off. I don't have it on. Constance was saying she's going to turn it off because everybody keeps bothering her, right, Constance, when you're? Yes. <laughs> I get sometimes upwards of 10 to 15, sometimes 20 phone calls in a day because I don't know why, but I get um, a lot of soliciting phone calls every day. And hmm. um, I put my phone number on the government do not call registry, but it doesn't seem to make a difference. Wow. And when somebody calls, if I an bother to answer it, the first things out of my mouth is do not call list. It just doesn't make a difference because it's like somebody else right behind them. I'm yeah, really I tempted. Too, but I don't, I don't to answer the those. phone. Um, I know, but it's very disconcerting to get one phone call right after the other all day long. You know, it's like it's it's an alert. Well, like and, you were saying, you have relatives that you that right you, you have to keep in contact with. So you know, right. I've changed the ringtones for each person that I want to hear from and then put a different ringtone, overall ringtone from everybody else. And so um, well, the thing good. about it is I have to look to see who the call is from because if it's from a doctor's office or something like that, then I have to take the call. And so still you have to look. Yeah. At the call. Yeah, it, it interrupts your concentration. Right. I mean, yeah. if you're getting up to 20 phone calls a day, that's 20 times you have to stop and look at the phone or pull it out of your pocket. or, And if you're busy doing something and your hands have pastel right. stuff all over them and you have to look at your phone, then. Yeah, yeah everything gets amazing. covered. <laughs> that's why you told me it. Uh, You've, uh, she, Diane, she starts a conversation. I was, well, I'm on night shift. I'm like, what? What the heck? Yeah, I, I turned it upside down on night shift. Yeah, so she's, she's done. I'll have to turn it back up, back right side up for the show, but, um, it's so quiet at night and <laughs> I just love it. <laughs> I mean, working in her studio at night, you know. Doesn't... I have, I've gotten into that space again where I've spent about four or five hours trying to go to sleep at night again. And, it's such a waste of time that I decided to just go back to the studio and start working until I'm exhausted and then go back home and go to bed. So well, they've, they have done studies where they've shown or proven that when you, when you have an interruption, it takes you about 20 minutes to get back to where you were. So every time you get interrupted, you're losing 20 minutes at least at the, at the minimum. Wow. Hmm. So it's really important to keep your, you know, to put all that stuff aside and get, you know, someplace where you can be in a quiet area where you can really concentrate on your work and not be interrupted every two minutes. And I think part of the problem, too, is that people think, you know, you're an artist, you're at home, they can call you up or stop by or whatever whenever they want, and you're not really working. But <laughs> people don't understand it is work. A lot you know? of people. Uh, yeah, exactly. it's true. Uh, I, 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 uh, even at my my uh, my part time uh, outside non art job, I mean, I have been able to. I've been very fortunate uh, that I've uh, reduced my uh, living expenses down to a bare minimum, so I only have to work out of the house in a non art job uh, two days out of the week, and it's a night shift. It's a Saturday and Sunday. The rest of the time is available for me to dedicate to working on my art. So that's why, you know, and I, this last, uh, last year I changed over where I reduced those hours down. I took a big hit. <laughs> Let me tell you, I, I live off of Raymond noodles quite a bit, <laughs> <laughs> but well, it's a choice, you know, but at least people at work though, they think 
they, my my colleagues they think they think that you know well he's got all this free time so what do you do you sit around and watch TV a lot I said what I said I actually I tell you what when I come to to work here it's almost a vacation because when I'm at home in my studio, I am working all the time and I feel guilty my paintbrushes talk to me they say why aren't you picking me up why aren't you using me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So it, to me, the television is a tool because I put it on the most boring thing I could possibly watch, and I try to use it as a way to bore myself to sleep. I try to use it to quiet my mind because when I'm in the studio, um, my brain is working all the time. And what I use the television for is when I'm laying in bed and I'm trying to quiet my mind to go to sleep. That's what I use the television for. Other than that... Yeah. That's the only thing that I, we don't even have a living room. So we don't sit in the living room and watch television. We use the television to go to sleep by. Yeah, the difference between being an artist or even a self-employed person is that you're constantly, you know, you, you know, when you work a nine to five job, you're only thinking about work between nine and five. You're not thinking about it once you leave there. But being an artist or a self-employed person, of any kind, you're constantly thinking about work. Yeah, you're and a self motivator. You're, yeah, you're. It never gets shut off. <laughs> right, your brain is. You have to turn your brain off. Yeah, I, because yeah. your brain doesn't know. My brain doesn't know how to turn itself off. I have to make it turn off. Piece of art. I'm doing something on social media. I'm right thinking about writing something for a blog. You know, or I, so. Right, but it's all work related. It's all you never stop thinking about it. I don't watch. I don't watch network TV at all. All my yeah, entertainment either. sources come from you know the internet. But I, I, I'm guilty of getting locked into the YouTube monster, the rabbit. The YouTube. <laughs> yeah. See, I couldn't watch that stuff while I'm trying to go to sleep uh, because that's too interesting. I'll watch something. <laughs> I would never go to sleep watching that because that's interesting. I have to watch things that are like an old movie that I've watched 40 times. That's what the kind of things that I have to watch when I'm trying to go to sleep. Something that's going to bore me to sleep. You know, if I watch something interesting, I'm never going to get to sleep. <laughs> yeah, because then you get more ideas and you're thinking about all this yeah, stuff. And your brain yeah. starts working, you know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Something else I thought was interesting uh, when you mentioned that video, Diane. I uh, either right before I I watched it or shortly afterwards. Then I came up with the idea. I uh, I created you know I you know produced these. I call them Clyde's Clyde's art stories, and uh, mm -hmm. this one was uh, about a. Uh, uh, I decided to create one of uh, where I, I work, do my art doodles, you know, and, and my, uh, yeah, I, I think I've told this before, art doodles, basically, I have these little, you know, scraps of paper, these five by sevens that are left over from other works, mm -hmm. and I just will take and, and uh, these are about as close as to abstract art as I ever get, because I would just, I won't pre-draw anything. I'll just sit there and I'll look at it for a little bit. And then I'll either with paintbrush, start throwing colors and messing around or with a pen and start messing around. And so I, so I just, I decided to make a, uh, a video of, uh, a time-lapse video of me doing some, uh, some Clyde's, uh, art doodles. Cause these are my, you know, my form of relaxation and everything afterwards when I got done, and then I saw that video about, you know, that lady mm -hmm. you know, talking about how you have to do something every day. That, uh, that was interesting. You know, I said, well, wait a minute. Yeah, she's got a point because that's something I'm guilty of. Uh, I don't keep a sketchbook. I don't sketch every day like I should. And I only work on art projects. I come up with projects. And, yeah, I, I do maybe three or four pieces a week sometimes of uh, completed works but then that's that's it i don't do anything in in preparation uh for that and if i'm uh if the uh if i'm not working on a major major uh, piece of work then i'm not doing anything 
So uh, these, uh, a lot of stuff, what she was saying, it kind of, you know, made sense. You know, it made, it made sense to me there that, that made me feel guilty, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, too, you you have, I mean, being an, an independent artist, you, you don't have other people helping you do all the stuff that has to get done. It is hard to create a piece of work or work on a painting or whatever every single day because you have so many other things you have to do too that are, are you know related to your business like posting on social media and you know writing or blo writing blog posts or whatever there's a lot of other stuff that has to get done just like office kind of work even that um takes you away from creating things so to even just dedicate an hour a day to just or even 15 minutes to just to only do your artwork of some or some artwork of some description it, it um kind of keeps your head in that creative space i think yeah what about the second video the second set uh ted ted talk constance you said you like that one where the lady is uh picking up stories with paintings yeah i like it that she did that with the um the stories the um the um the young girl's face with with what what was that girl, the pearl, girl, girl, the pearl, pearl. Uh, girl with the pearl earring yes. <laughs> the girl with the pearl earring yeah. how she uh, made a story that went with the painting about um who the girl was and why was she looking at the artist that way and mm -hmm. then the one with the guy who was blushing that they didn't know who the artist was and um yeah, they didn't know who uh, the name. They didn't know who he was either. <laughs> yeah, and they didn't know who he was, and I was thinking maybe because uh, she came up with the story, and then I was looking at the the painting myself and noticed that there was a few place places in the painting that to me looked a little off. But I was thinking, well, maybe the reason they didn't know was because it wasn't a artist who was. Um, a well-known artist and they didn't sign it because maybe she wasn't supposed to be maybe it was a, a woman because women weren't supposed to be painters back then and that was the reason she didn't sign it and he was blushing because she was doing his portrait when she wasn't <laughs> supposed to be painting well, this kind of goes back to the conversation we had uh was the last time or time before about um not um let your story uh, your painting talk for you not be telling like a story about it right. per se, so that the viewer can kind of make come to their own conclusions so that's it was interesting right. that they were she was talking about that a little bit like right that's a I thought story that was cool. from what she saw yeah how she interpreted it and yeah. i liked it the fact well now i just was thinking about the paintings that she picked and the paintings that she picked were pretty much all portraits of people yeah. They were not, some of them weren't fi full on face portraits, but they were picture paintings of people and that she was mm -hmm. picking ones that were giving a story and they were, um, they were, it was curious because the paintings were, um, they had, uh, a different sort of look to the portraits other than just regular portraits they had a, either a haunting look or a blushing face or um they were doing something unusual in the painting but the painting had something special about the way the portrait was done the, it was you know not your just usual i'm sitting in front of an artist getting my portrait done yeah. sort of painting and that's why she chose them because they they could have a story that you could put on them rather than what the artist yeah, the may have put told, on them. Yeah, the, the, the painting told us, uh, uh, you know, evoked uh, your imagination, you know, and, right. and uh, caused you to, you know, have a story. You know. What always cracks me up when you watch these, uh, these videos of these uh, art critics and these art historian, you know, experts, and they're talking about, you know, uh, a certain Caravaggio painting or this or that. And what goes through my mind was, was 
it's a shame I had no way of having a time machine where I could go back and actually talk to the artist because I'll bet you that that artist did not have any of that bull crap in his mind when he was creating that piece. <laughs> But that and it does is, make you wonder where they come up with some of the stuff. <laughs> but that, that's the fun part is being able to put your make your own story up about well, I'm not a painting. About that. I, I, what, no, what you what that lady that's different. Okay, I'm talking yeah. about the so called experts yeah. who go, you know, and what happens? Oh yeah. They, they 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 go and they write this up, you know, or they write a book about it, and then another people <laughs> comes along and they t keep perpetuating the same story. Which is yeah, actually, and actually, the reason why Caravaggio has become so popular within the last uh, uh, hundred years or last fifty years or so is because for over two hundred years he was completely neglected because of exactly that. When he, because he was such a bad boy in his personal life, and he made made <laughs> his, enemies, his enemies did their best they wrote up all the kinds of material about and did their, did their best to erase him from history but his paintings couldn't be erased and then uh it was like in the mid 18th century that a french uh historian came across caravaggio's paintings and started researching who this guy was you know and everything well then his story that he came came up came up with was kind of like the the uh, what you call the, uh, the 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 norm or the or the the you know everybody followed him. Yes, they agreed. Well, then afterwards in the 19th century, other historians went did more research and found out what pretty much most people have agreed is the true basic story story of Caravaggio. But for well over 200 years, he was completely neglected, and he was because his enemies they did their best you know to hide him and everything. It makes me wonder about when this lady said, you know, use that painting as an example, painted by an anonymous artist and anonymous paint. It makes me wonder how many more hundreds or maybe millions of paintings are there like that, you know, to where because of some kind of a personal thing, they're, they're being forgotten. And if, if it wasn't for the fact that Caravaggio's paintings were in major churches, were in major uh, uh, facilities, around europe in, in in italy i mean he he w he would have still probably been for god but you know people said hey who the heck did this guy you know who did this you know and and so yeah and some of the artists or a lot of the artists probably didn't keep um any kind of journal or record or whatever i mean they said that about vermeer vermeer didn't they don't know much about him really they're just making assumptions that things were a certain way or you know things happened a certain way, but they really don't know because he didn't have many journals or anything. I like when, so, I, when discussing, you know, the, the uh, picture, the painting of the girl with the pearl earrings, you know, that, you know, Vermeer had 11 kids, you know, there's probably 11 kids running through the house, you know, and everything. <laughs> <laughs> that is a lot of children. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think, I think not telling so much about a painting leaves that door open so that it's more compelling like you know you can make your own story up about it whatever you however your version of seeing it is mm -hmm. so it's kind of it just makes it more compelling than yeah. rather than telling every detail and you know there's not doesn't leave any imagination room well, that's for like, the viewer that's like conscience okay and uh conscience put i saw she put some postings on uh, facebook the other day she uh of a one of your pastels, a new pastel of these cars, these cars on a, it's cars on a highway. What's that all about? When oh, I, you mean the lightest, one of the lighter pastels yeah. that I just did? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to. The cityscape of the bridge with the cars on it. Yeah, the bridge with the cars on it. Yeah, what? <laughs> that was for, that was for a class. I have been putting off doing that pastel. It's a nocturne pastel and i have been procrastinating doing that painting for over a month <laughs> first off i don't like cityscapes and so i have i've done i did two did i put up the studies that i did i did a black and white value study 
and then I did a pen, pencil, and a ink. Well, the one I did I, the black and white value study. I did over a month ago. The one, the one that <laughs> and I decided I, that oh my gosh, this is going to be a real pain in the butt. <laughs> so I procrastinated doing it. So then I decided, you know what, I have got to do this painting and get it behind me. So I decided to go ahead and do it and get it knocked out. So I went ahead a couple of days ago and did the pen and ink one. And well, it's, you know, a concept. But the one, I, the one I was talking about was the pastel with some car. Right. Cars on a bridge. Was right. The other two were the study thumbnails to do get familiarize myself with the scene in order to get ready to do the pastel one. Okay. I so see. that's what I did in order to do the pastel. So then I when I got that behind me, I then I went ahead and did another sketch on the pastel paper. Well with the, the with the cars on the bridge. That's that that's that evokes a story, you know. Because I, I saw that and I said, "What the heck is she was she sitting in a traffic jam and <laughs> to draw something?" I mean, that's what went through my mind when I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you see what I mean? You you've accomplished. You've yeah. Created a story, you know. <laughs> so I'm going to. I, I like I, I like those glowing traffic lights up there. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, I'm going to put it in when I create the. Uh, the video for the uh, YouTube version of our podcast. I'll uh, I'll grab those and put those in there so people can see what we're talking about. You know, I think they get a kick out of it. Yeah. Okay. So, Diane, are you yeah. still, are you still working on your little five by seven uh, paintings or? Yeah, <laughs> I am. Have you, any, I just, have you got any nearby so you can show one here, or do you have? I I met, did one today actually. It's wet though. Let me see. Oh. Have you put in that one? I can't pick up, but I don't remember which ones I showed you already. I don't know if you saw this one or not. No, I don't oh, that one's cute. No, I haven't seen that Look one. at that. Okay. Cool. That one's pretty. Because what I'll do is I'll grab a screenshot from this video and, and put did that. You, did you get it? Yeah. Yeah, I got it good enough. Yeah. Uh, oh, I have a couple other ones over there, but I think you've already seen the other ones. I can't remember which ones I showed you and which ones I didn't. This one's just waves or just a... It always seems like five by seven is not a whole lot of area to put a whole lot of information in. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's amazing how much information you can get on five by seven. Yeah, yeah the other one's still... The other one I did today, so it's wet. I just did this afternoon, actually. Yeah, the only five by sevens I use is the scraps of watercolor paper, and those are just single single one items. Like when I did the beta, beta fish for a while or or maybe flowers, but I don't do anything like what you're doing, a whole complete scene, you know, scenery. Okay, well, we got off the track a little bit here, but then, like I said, from the beginning, folks, uh, this episode is about nothing. Like the old Jerry Seinfeld series, they used to say it was about nothing. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what the, this, this, this particular episode, episode 15, September the 30th, the last day of the month for 2019. For September, and we were uh, all just talking about nothing. I think it's time to wrap it up. This is Clyde J. Kale saying goodbye to everyone, and bye bye Diane, and bye bye Constance. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. All right. Thank you so much for listening. And thank you, Diane and Constance, for joining me. Bye bye, folks. Until next time. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constance Brosnan and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. Constance Brosnan at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C-B-R-O-S-N-A-N-S. Clyde J. Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com. 
If you'd like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. That's cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons License 2019. Thank you for listening.